Right. Good. Good. Yeah. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the yet another webinar from Citrix. We are thrilled to have EG Innovations as one of our partners hosting this webinar for us. And in this webinar, we're going to talk about four steps to deliver a perfect work from home anywhere with their product for Citrix infrastructure. So without much delay, let's get started. Yeah, next slide, please. Great, so we are lined up with two speakers, one myself and, uh, and Bala from uh, EG Innovations. So Bala Vaidinathan is the CTO at EG Innovations. So Bala, welcome to this webinar. Uh, great to have you here. Would you mind uh, going ahead and introducing yourself, telling us what you do at EG Innovations and what are your roles and responsibilities? Hey. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Manju. Uh, I'm, as Manju said, uh, the CTO at EG Innovations. So I'm responsible for product direction and uh, engineering services. Great. Thank you, Bala. Welcome again. So my name is Manjunath Agali. I work as senior manager for the technical marketing team in the Citrix Study program at Citrix. I've been working with Citrix for close to nine years now, primarily responsible for helping technology partners to develop, integrate, and validate their products with Citrix products and services. So moving on to the next slide. So we have a packed agenda. We have, we'll start with objective uh, of this webinar and we'll move on to know more about EG Innovations. We'll also learn about EG partner, EG Innovations partnering with Citrix. What are the IT ch challenges that we face and how EG innovations can provide a solution to those challenges. And more importantly, we're going to learn about the four steps to work from anywhere, uh, success mantra from EG and from Bala today. And if time permits, uh, we are going to talk briefly about the new, the new product from EG, which is called as EG Express for cloud. And again, if time permits, we will show the demo as well. And definitely we will have a Q and A session at the end for about five to 10 minutes. Right. So before we kick start, a uh, few housekeeping items. So we all are on the Zoom webinar. So we, there is a question and answer panel, which you can use uh, to ask any questions. So like I said, we have reserved five to 10 minutes at the end. You can ask your questions. If it is a yes or no question, we will definitely answer it right away. If it needs an explanation, we'll take it at the end of the, during the end of the session. And webinar is being recorded. All the slides will be shared along with the webinar post one or two days. Great, next slide. So quickly, uh, understanding about Citrix Ready Program. So Citrix Ready Program is a leading technology partner program. We are pioneer in this. We have been in the industry for over 16 years. We have verified over 5,300 products. We have over 720 partners associated in the, pro in the program. And we have been validating more than 52 different product types, right? So our main focus is help is to help our technology partners in becoming successful. And how we do that is basically helping them to build the integrations, integrate those integrations with Citrix products and services and validate them. And the validation process is a stringent process, which covers the depth of how the product should be integrated and how a normal user or an enterprise would use that product by end of the day, those scenarios are actually reproduced in the validation process and tested and validated. So this program is for every partner type, size, vertical, and region. And all the test kits that we write are engineering approved. That also means to say that engineering team knows what we test because they know they work with customers, they get the requirements from customers and we put that requirements in the form of test kit and give those test kits to our partners like EG Innovations to develop the product, integrate and validate. So the main uh, idea here is to give customers that assured compatibility when they want to make the purchase and decision, right? So we help for customers to make the purchase decision easy and simple. And for partners, it's also about getting higher level of engagement with Citrix, knowing what Citrix uh, is doing, knowing the roadmap of Citrix products, and also you know, doing some lead gen opportunities and getting higher visibilities via Citrix properties and events. 
So that's the reason we have this program to help both customers and partners. So next slide. So to put it in a better perspective, uh, all the partners that we have in the program have gone through the stringent and rigorous verification process. The result of that is to show you the source. I mean, basically our Citrix Ready Marketplace becomes only source of truth for customers to evaluate partner verified products, making your purchasing decision very simple and easy and with good number of choices because all these products have been validated like the way you expect to work on your infrastructure. Next slide. So what's about Citrix and EG Innovations? Like I said, uh, EG Innovations are a partner over two decades now. However, they're a Citrix ready partner since 2010. They are one of our key partners in the performance monitoring and analytics ecosystem. And all the solutions are purpose built for Citrix products and services. And they also support both Citrix DAS, which is the cloud version of virtual apps and desktops and other services, and also the on-prem version of CVAD or virtual apps and desktops. EG Innovation products are Citrix ready verified with most of the Citrix products. So we have the screenshot there to show one of the key product EG Enterprise, which serves as a monitoring suite for monitoring everything under the hood under your infrastructure. And that product is validated with almost all the Citrix products and services. Next slide. So one of the key objectives of this webinar, what do you get out of this webinar, right? So basically we all know that when we work or when you work as an IT administrator or a Citrix ad admin, some of the issues that are raised by users are like Citrix is slow, performance is not good, there is latency, launch time is more, et cetera, right? But as an IT administrator, we, all, we also know that it's not always about Citrix or it's not at all Citrix sometimes, right? So our users blame what they see in front, but that's not the issue uh, where it exists always. It's an issue that is caused by something else or, and users can't see that straight away and that just they blame the tricks. So we need a solution which can help monitor and underline, which can help monitor the underlying uh, hardware, software resources that forms the complete infrastructure and gives us the visibility of all these resources in single pane of glass. And also as this solution which helps in monitoring should also help us in identifying the network latency causes and more importantly, provide uh, performance monitoring reports for today and for the past days. And finally, uh, it should also help us in proactively taking some actions based on the issue that it occurs on behalf of IT administrator to prevent the issues at the first place. So who can do all of this, right? So the answer is simple. It's easy innovations who can help us do all of this seamlessly. And on the slide, you can see some of the customer feedback or testimony that we got uh, for easy innovations when they deployed easy innovations on the infrastructure with and without Citrix. So they are hardware agnostic, software agnostic, virtualization software agnostic. So now Abala is going to walk us through the four steps for successful infrastructure monitoring and steps for successfully working from anywhere. So stay tuned for next 15 to 20 minutes. You're going to hear a lot of good things that easy innovations can make our life very easy to monitor and keep it updated and keep it running all throughout the day and year. So Bala, over to you. Thank you, Manju, for that uh, introduction. And we have a poll coming up. Can I say now? Do you, Great. Okay. So you yeah, let me read out the poll. So the first question that we have is, do you have a performance monitoring analytics solution for your infrastructure? We just want to hear it out. How many of you really have a solution which helps in monitoring and performance and analytics? So the answers are yes or no. You can just go ahead and uh, type in the, type in the, select the questions that is applicable to you. So I see a lot of people are answering already. I'm going to bring down the pool in another 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. Great. Uh, so while it's actually 50, 50 percentage of the users saying that they have a <laughs> solution and they don't have. That's an interesting mix. 
Yeah. Thank you guys for participating in that. Uh, let's move on. All right, so as Manju was saying, uh, I'm going to take the next uh, 20 to 30 minutes to talk to you guys about what are the four main approaches that our customers have taken to successfully deliver work from anywhere uh, experience uh, to their customers. Um, so before we get into that, a quick uh, introduction about EG for the folks who haven't heard of us. Uh, we are a global enterprise class uh, performance management uh, solution that delivers end-to-end uh, -end visibility, observability, diagnostics, reporting for your uh, total IT infrastructure services. With end-user computing being one of our speciality, we've done that over 20 plus years. Uh, these are some of our uh, customers, a sampling of our customers, if you will. And um, these are some of our awards and recognition. We are pretty highly rated across the board, and uh, these are some of our certifications. And like I said, uh, we have been in this space for over a couple of decades, and uh, we've earned our stripes here. So, four steps to work from anywhere success. So, let's talk at a high level what these four steps are, and I would go into details in each and every one of this and uh, show you guys a relevant demonstration so you can grasp what is going on. So observability is the first step. We'll talk about that a little bit, but what observability does is helps you be proactive than reactive. Identify issues and take care of them automatically before they start impacting users. So that's number one. Number two is in-depth Citrix visibility. So why is this important? Because you need to really understand how this environment functions and how the different connections between the different applications that are working together to deliver this service. Once you understand that you can apply machine language on top of it, machine learning on top of it, and get to a place where you can focus on causes versus effects. So it helps you understand why problems are happening so you can focus on fixing them rather than chasing the effects of the problem. Now, end-to-end -end visibility. As you will see as we go on, um, Citrix service or work from home desktop or a virtual application service is essentially a combination of different applications and services working together to deliver something to the end user. And if you're not looking at the entire end-to-end so um, you're bound to have a lot of gaps and that will not help you when it comes to managing and delivering effective work from home access. And then last but not least, analytics. Of course, there will be a lot of data that will be coming out of it. Uh, data is not as important as information. How can we turn that data into information, useful, actionable information? We'll talk about that in analytics. So with that, let's talk about uh, what's going on right now, right? I mean, in the last few years, it's been a whirlwind of change. Uh, digital transformation was really led by COVID-19, and that resulted in dramatic changes in the past few years. Um, increase in remote work and collaborations was significant. Uh, most people pretty much moved out of the office and that trend um, has not fully reversed, and I don't think it's ever going to fully reverse. But some people are coming back to office still, but still, uh, you're at a situation where work from anywhere is, is a new reality. Everybody wants that flexibility, and every company wants to be able to deliver that. Increasing migration of assets to the cloud, so everything is going into cloud, which means automatically expanding, automatically uh, shrinking, and security becomes important on top of it. So a lot of things have changed in the past few years. With this, it's no longer uh, enough if you just have a few IT experts who will take care of and manage your day-to-day -day running of your IT. You need effective tools and processes to really successfully run your services going forward. So what do you basically need? It needs to be simple to use. It needs to be integrated with IT operation flows. It needs to be scalable. 
It needs to be accessible from anywhere, anytime. So in effect, modern monitoring is observability. What does it need to be able to do? It needs to be not just collecting metrics, but it needs to be able to automatically map dependencies, automatically detect anomalies, automatically repair things, help you optimize, do a little bit of config and change tracking, obviously do root cause analysis. All of this needs to happen for you to effectively manage your services going forward. I will look at an example of it as I will dive into a demo shortly. But before that, a quick poll question in terms of what are the kind of challenges you guys are facing when it comes to managing your uh, work from home environment today? So let me read out the question. What are the key challenges that you would like to address seamlessly? Identify issues before they occur. End-to-end -end visibility of my infrastructure. Identify root cause for quick fix reports and analytics for capacity planning, or my favorite, all of the above. Go ahead, we'll give you guys uh, like 15, 30 seconds. Manju, I'm assuming you will be closing yeah, the poll. Yeah, I'm tracking that as well. So okay. it's 40 seconds, I'm gonna close it in another 20 seconds. Great, I'm gonna close the question, pull question in another five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Great, so majority of them have said 64%, all of the above. I'm gonna bring the results on screen. And uh, the second highest is 50. I didn't have right. a cost for quicker fix. And Thanks then I everybody for participating. Yeah. Yep, all of the above was my favorite because. Most people need all of this. And identifying issues before they occur, identifying root cause were also quite popular. So let's talk about how we can address those things using these four key tenets, right? First step is observability. All right, let's talk about observability from the context of user experience. So I wanna walk you guys through how observability is, how comprehensive it is from a user experience perspective, right? So in this scenario, I'm gonna talk about, let's say in digital workspace, uh, whether it will be virtual apps or virtual desktops, we are monitoring user experience. And when we're monitoring user experience, it's not just a question of latency somewhere. It's a question of a complete experience. Now, how do you look at complete experience? You have to have synthetic monitoring, you have to have real user monitoring. So even in synthetic monitoring, there are different levels of synthetic monitoring. Can you monitor logons? Can you monitor simple actions? And then can you combine that with real user experience monitoring to get a comprehensive picture that gives you true visibility into what is going on in your environment? Okay, let's take a look at how that works. So this is a logon simulator. So instead of showing you guys PowerPoint screens, let me show you actual demonstration. So I am currently connecting into the EG software and I'm gonna show you guys a quick demo of different ways in which we are looking at user experience here. So the first methodology is essentially log on simulation. So in this scenario you can see virtual apps we are logging on to, virtual desktops we are logging on to and you can see everything is green. That means everything is under the thresholds or under the SLAs agreed upon for all the key users. Now, here is a breakdown of what is going on in there. So you can see that the breakdown is comprehensive. You can tell how long it took at the client processing side, how long it took at the Netscaler great way, how long did it take for authentication, ICA file download, HDFC, session establishment and finally application and desktop launch. And then we log out. So you can see overall how long it takes. And then if you want some details, you can see the full script here. So you get a pretty good view of what is going on 
with the synth with the login for this particular user. Now, why is synthetic performance monitoring important? Because it happens 24 by 7, and if you make a change in the over the weekend or the middle of the night, and it starts impacting something, you don't have to wait till the users come on in the morning. And this is something that we see time and again with our customers, where synthetic monitoring catches some of these problems way ahead of time. You finish the change, you said everything looks good, and you come out two hours later, you start getting alerts because login is much slower than before now. Now, without synthetic login, uh, synthetic logon monitoring, you would have identified that when people, real people started logging on in the morning, and by that time, you have a real issue at hand. You have user experience being compromised. But with synthetic transaction monitoring, you don't have that. So real user monitoring is also available. This is an overall average of different users and how long are they taking to launch different things? How long does it take for them to log on and all that? And let me show you a couple of other things here. So here we are going to look at another synthetic monitoring where we are basically logging in, accessing applications, we are opening items, we are updating items, checking out items and logging out. So this is a full level of transaction monitoring. We are not just looking at login, we are looking at a sequence of transactions. So again, this would be used for different use cases and our customers use it depending on their use cases. Some of these things they want to check 24 by seven and this helps you with that. And once things start breaking up, so for example, if we, here we say things are a little bit slow. Once things start breaking out, you can see why it is happening by looking at the topology. Now, this is a representation of all the different applications involved in delivering this particular service. As you can see, even though it's a very simple representation, it is still complex enough where there are dozen things involved in delivering the service. You've got uh, ADC, you've got Citrix storefront, you've got Citrix delivery controller, you've got virtual apps, virtual apps, and Zen desktop. You've got different types of applications and servers that are in the back end. You can, you can drill down from each and every one of these. For example, any color coding. Let's talk about that for a second. Anything that is green is good. Anything that is uh, in any shade of orange, yellow, or red, it's not so good. The darker the shade is, the more severe the problem is. Obviously, red is critical. Orange is major, and yellow is informational. So in this case, we can drill down into the orange. We can see screen refresh latency is high for that particular user, and we can drill in and see what is going on. Now, I want to go into a real user login. So now we looked at synthetic transaction, synthetic user experience monitoring. Let's look at real user experience monitoring. So now I can quickly bring up a dashboard of all the users and what is going on with those users. And it is aligned in such a way that any problematic users you have will automatically bubble up in the top so you can clearly see in one quick snapshot what is going on with them. And in this scenario, you can even search you can search by user if you want. So I can say Scott, and then only Scott will show up. So let's drill down into Scott. You can see Scott. This is real users session. We are looking at the session. We are looking at uh, the place where the user is connecting from, the session topology, which server he's connected to, what is his EDT latency, network latency, and HTX latency. His HTX latency is high, and you can see screen refresh latency is high here, and you can see that CPU time used by this session is also high. And if you can drill down, you will see which application is consuming a lot of CPU. So this comprehensive visibility and automatically telling you where the problem is instead of letting you figure out by looking at the metrics, 
gives you the observability you need. In this case, let me go and show you guys a log on time breakdown. So you can see where its time was spent in the real log on. In this, uh, since this is a real log on, we can get more metrics from within Citrix and you can see where things are slowing down. What our customers use is, our customers use a combination of these two, that is synthetic uh, transaction monitoring and real user monitoring to make sure that there are no issues with user experience. Log on issues can be systematically identified and cleared up the same way um, any latency issues can be systematically identified and cleared up. So once they have this in front of them, their goal is to try to get to all the users to green as much as possible. And if something is happening, so in this scenario, well, I'll talk about this a little bit later in the demo, but in this scenario, you're seeing HTX latency is high here. Okay, HTX latency is high because network latency is high. Very clearly, you can quickly see they, they, they are using a poor network connection. Whereas in this case, HTX latency is high and CPU time is high. So network latency is good. It is something going on within that session. So somebody at the somebody who's receiving trouble tickets, somebody who's looking at it from a help desk perspective can quickly see what is going on here, quickly observe where the problem is and take care of the issues on the first call with the user. The biggest benefit that our customers get with this level of visibility is they're able to resolve problems with first call. When the users are having a problem, they call up with the call up the help desk. The help desk doesn't say, okay, let me take a look at it and call you guys back. They have enough information, they have enough visibility to be able to address that problem right then and there. And that results in huge user satisfaction. All right. Now, in the interest of time, I just wanted to preface this that I'm not going to be going into too much detail in every one of this um, because I want to give you guys uh, a feel for what are the different approaches uh, without taking up a few hours of your time. So if you guys want detail, essentially what you're seeing is a trailer. If you guys want more detailed information, if you guys are interested in drilling down into something, feel free to reach out to us and we'll set up a separate detailed demo for you guys. Okay, so that's a quick snapshot into how observability can help you. Okay, we saw the full session simulation and we saw real user experience monitoring back, to forth, back and forth, right? Now let's look at the next step, which is end-to-end -end visibility. So what is end-to-end -end visibility? Now this is one of my favorite things, and this is one of the biggest challenges that gets overlooked most of the times because most solutions out there in the market focus on a siloed approach. So you want Citrix monitoring? Let me give you monitoring just for Citrix. You want network monitoring? Let me give you monitoring just for network. What that does is creates a scenario like this where everybody has their own silo. Right? The end user is saying something is not working. Every administrator has their own tool, has their own silo. They can look at their own box and say whether something is good or something is not good. And this generally uh, leads to a tendency where it's not my problem. Uh, it, it's a syndrome where everybody wants to get on the call because a dozen people are on the call and they want to make sure that it's not their problem. And I'm sure many of you on the webinar today have experienced this. So eventually what ends up happening is there is a lot of back and forth, a lot of uh, finger pointing, a lot of challenges. And a few hours later, you might eventually find out where the problem is. But this is not the right way to do things. We know that today applications are multi-tiered. Multiple services, multiple applications are working together to provide an end user service. It needs to be managed and monitored that way, that way, not just as a silo. So all of this that is involved in delivering the service needs to be monitored. If you do that, it will enable you to accomplish 
a much better way of managing problems in these environments. Add to that the cloud complexity, right? Now some, some environments have moved to cloud, some environments are in-house, and there is interaction between those two, and that creates its own challenges. So when you have services that are spread across a hybrid environment, and EZ provides full visibility into Citrix Cloud, into AWS Cloud, Azure Cloud, and all of these different pieces, just as a heads up. But I wanted to illustrate these challenges that we have. And if you have different solutions, what ends up happening is you have to look at different screens and you have to analyze data at different levels and then get together on a meeting and then compare notes, try to figure out where the problem is. So there is a lot of human effort and human intelligence involved, and that is not the fastest way to resolve a problem when you're facing a problem. That is not a fastest way even to identify the problem. It takes a very long time, as most of you in the call would know. So how do we address this? Let's talk about that using the demo. So I'm going to give you an example in this demo of doing it the right way. Okay looking at it as a business service. So I'm going to look at this entire thing as a business service. Let's go to partner access. Okay, so we looked at this before. Let's look at topology. And there is a problem with this desktop system. Build into it. You can see that that particular Virtual app was running on a ESX host. Let me go back and walk you through this a little bit slowly. So this is the service. I go into the service. I see that this front end is having a minor issue. And I can go to the topology of the service. And this is where I am doing end to end. I'm essentially looking at this service end to end. So I'm looking at all the different applications involved in delivering the service and also the mapping. Most of this mapping is detected by the software automatically because you don't have time to put all these things together. Uh, but the mapping is critical because it helps with the dependencies, it helps with machine learning and heuristics. So with that mapping, it becomes smarter and says, okay, there are multiple problems here but this is a more severe problem than some of these minor problems. So it is directing you to get into that. So you can clearly see from this, uh, our customers love this because they put it up on their uh, on their NOC and they know they have dependent services, right? They're, uh, they're consuming X, Y, Z services from different uh, organizations or different business units or different third party vendors. And you can clearly see them highlighted in green or orange or red, depending on where the problem is. And that enables them to quickly route and fix the problem. So here is an example. There's an orange here. Let me drill down into that. And once I drill down, the physical layer is now visible. So it's running on ESX host, and this is having a medium priority issue, but the host itself is having a critical issue. Let me drill into that. And now you see one of the VMs is having a performance issue. So one of the VMs is consuming 99% CPU. And drill into this and see what the problem is. Somebody is running backup, and that's taking all the CPU available on that system. So that is choking the CPU available for the rest of the VMs there, and that is having a trickle-down effect on your Citrix service. Now, backup running on an ESX host will not be the first thing anybody would look at when you're having a Citrix problem. And that is how interdependent these systems are today. Having a smart end-to-end -end performance management solution will help you identify these problems that seem irrelevant at first, but that are impacting your service. So you know the dependencies, you're looking at it end-to-end, -end, and you know where the problems are. Now, the final piece of that. You don't have to actually click through everything to see the problem. I just walked you through that to give you a view of how the application and how the end-to-end -end, uh, monitoring works. 
in reality, you can see here very quickly that ICP utilization on this particular VM is a problem. It's a critical problem that needs to be addressed. And the rest of the problems have been reduced to major or minor so that you can focus on this particular issue. Even though this problem has created downstream Citrix issues, the software is smart enough to tell you this is the root cause of the problem and the others are effects. And that is an invaluable piece of information you need when you're troubleshooting. So imagine your alarm console or your event console looks like this, where you have 18 issues right now, but you don't have priorities. When you don't have priorities, the onus is upon you to try to figure out where the problem is, which one should the which one is the first problem that needs to be addressed or who needs to be associated with what problem and all those things. That becomes a huge challenge. But with end-to-end -end monitoring and heuristics, so EG has multiple patterns uh, in our um, machine learning heuristics, with mapping and with uh, root cause analysis that will help you and give you actionable information. Um, instead of giving you this is something that our customers love again because they can focus on something that they can fix now this is okay somebody is running back up here that needs to be stopped immediately this system will recover and things will be better if i had just said okay and, uh, virtual cpu is high for this particular system then i'll have to go in and try to figure out why it is high what can i need what do i need to do and all that but giving actionable information helps and prioritizing which one to address is a huge help because then it helps mean time to repair. Okay, I'm sure you guys have some questions at this point. So I'm gonna take a couple of minutes and then answer a couple of questions here. And then I'll come back once we finish this uh, to take further questions. Uh, Manju, any questions? If you don't mind reading up. Yeah, there is a one question. So when you're presenting, when you're showing the demo of the first one for observability, there's a question about what part of the technology stack are you using to populate that metrics? Okay, very interesting question. Metric collection um, is something that is fundamental to what we do. Uh, the most important thing that we look at when we collect metrics is uh, what is the least resource intensive way to collect a metric? So it could be by running some scripts at the operating system level or uh, latching onto some API that is being provided by the vendor or um, testing from outside. I can get a particular metric in multiple different ways. Uh, what we focus on is what is the least resource, int resource intensive way to get it? So depending on the different types of technologies uh, that we monitor, metric collection could be in various different manners, but we focus on keeping it as lightweight as possible. And uh, just to elaborate on that, we support over uh, 300 different types of platforms. Uh, we collect over 50,000 different types of unique metrics. So a lot of metrics uh, that we collect and we use a lot of different technologies. The technologies we use to collect these metrics are dependent on those different platforms we collect metric from. Great. Uh, there's a simple question. Uh, do you provide training for using your product or what kind of training is provided for using EG? Yes, we have multiple training um, programs uh, that can be customized to your need. Uh, a lot of our customers, uh, get their help desk retrained uh, once every year because they have a lot of attrition in their help desk. We can do that level of training. We can do full-fledged administrative training. And there are a lot of videos on our website on how to do certain things. And our support desk is very helpful too, so you can reach out to them. Um, in effect, yes, a lot of different types of trainings are possible. So feel free to reach out to us with your requirement and we'll take care of it. Great, yeah, we can proceed to the slides. Uh, All right. We'll come back to the questions again. Okay. Thank you. All right, the third step is in-depth expertise. Uh, in-depth expertise helps you 
focus on root cause of issues and quicker fixes. You saw some of that already in the end-to-end -end picture, but I want to show you a couple of uh, things here uh, really quick from an in-depth uh, expertise standpoint. I'll give you a taste of how this works, right? So we're going to look at a similar problem here. So for example, in this case, you're looking at John's session. I'm looking at pure metrics here, and you can see John's session has screen refresh latency of eight, and his client network latency is seven seconds. So obviously this problem is because of poor network. So John is having a poor network and that is why he's having this problem. And we are not only just saying that there is a problem with screen refresh latency, with our expertise, we are able to combine that, see that this problem is going to cause that problem. So we are marking that as an issue too, and we are showing that they have poor connection. Okay, now a similar situation, let's look at another system or another user. So in this scenario, you can see screen refresh latency is high for this user. This is Kevin coming from UK. And you can see that his uh, printer bandwidth input is high, printer bandwidth output is high. So he's choking the printer on his side and that is causing his screen refresh latency high. He does have a strong connection, so there is nothing wrong with this connection problem. So you can clearly see, if we were just saying screen refresh latency, this would not be very useful because these are two completely different types of screen refresh latencies. However, having the additional information, not just additional data, but in form of information because we've marked it as an issue, helps you quickly identify why this user is having this problem. And for good measure, let's take a look at another example where, again, a screen refresh latency is bad, but this is happening because there is a significant CPU usage on that particular session. And you can drill down and see why the CPU says is high. Somebody's using a Java GUI that is taking up a lot of CPU, and that is creating your screen different latency. This is an indicator in terms of the depth of metrics we collect, and the information and the knowledge we possess that helps us identify real issues in real time. So if I had everything green, then the onus is upon you to try to figure out what is going on. And if I had everything red, again, the onus is upon you to try to figure out what's going on. But not only do we collect a lot of metrics, but we have the expertise to say at particular situation, at a particular situation, what is the problem? Why is this user experiencing this issue? Or why is the system experiencing this issue? And that comes with in-depth metric collection and in-depth expertise. And I also want to show you guys. This is a an example of a virtual apps dashboard, and you can have this for virtual desktops too. Essentially, this gives you. Um, I'm talking about expertise and in depth. Uh, metric collection and in-depth expertise. Uh, we are showing this because this is a requirement that came from a lot of our customers and we did it for those customers because we saw time and again, people were having issues when they were coming from different locations and it was pertinent for our customers to understand first up when the customer is, when a user is calling in, where is this user coming from? And is, this a, is there a problem generally in that location or connecting from that location? And the ability to map it like this for different users in your environment, for different uh, groups in your environment, is phenomenally useful because at a simple glance, you can tell very quickly, okay, this guy from UK is having a HDX latency issue. This guy from, Sweden is having latency issues. Canada is doing fine. Uh, six sessions from US, some of them having latency issues. And then you can drill down and you can see that, okay, everything from Texas is good. Everything from Pennsylvania is good. New Jersey is bad. 
So you can clearly see how this can be helpful in real time when you're tracking this across your environment. And that's where the expertise and knowing what is required in these environments comes in. And there are a lot of bells and whistles like this that are pertinent to different types of use cases. And we don't have time in this to cover all of that, but this is just a taste of what the software can do because of the in-depth expertise. And if you're interested in some of the things for your use cases or your requirements that you might have, uh, like we said earlier, please reach out to us and we'll be happy to set up a more detailed overview for you guys. Uh, let me see, quickly wrap up a couple of these things. In-depth metrics, we just looked at it. So we look at all the different Citrix tiers, HTX channels, user experience, Netscaler, I haven't even touched on it, storefront, all of those different uh, delivery controllers and your backend SQL servers or different types of application servers. We can look at user activity based on the type of URLs they access, what is the most popular URL they are accessing, all of those different things. Um, again, these slides will be available. You guys can take a look at it. A um, lot of stuff being collected. I'll just show you a quick illustration of this. If we go to the home page, you can see we are collecting about 44 systems. We are collecting 25,000 metrics. That's a lot of metrics being collected. But if you look at the alerts, it provides actionable information. So there is one thing for you to look at. Critical alert, one thing to look at. So that is the power of being able to convert that data into information. All right, let me go back to my slides. Um, I'm going to keep the rest in the slides in interest of time. So we do historical data analy analytics, machine learning, correlation engine, and all of that is in place. Um, so you saw some of that already root cause display. So main root cause is showing up at the top and we have an incident management screen where the rest of the effects are prioritized under the main root cause. Okay, let's talk about analytics. I'm gonna take a few minutes on this and then we'll jump into Q&A. Out of the box analytics. Now it's great to collect all these metrics. How can we help you? We can help you optimize your environment. You can help you right size your environment. We can help you with auditing and planning. So let's take a look at some of that. Okay, now there are dozens and dozens of more reports that are out there with our reporter. We can create hundreds of different types of default reports that are already there. I'm just gonna show you some use cases that you might be interested in. Historic analysis for stepwise user login. So, which area of the login does a user spend most of the time on? What are the different types of applications that people are launching and how frequently are they launching? What's the most popular user? Who's the most resource consuming user? Um, which is the most resource consuming application? Um, what URL is the most resource consuming? And this is one of our favorites, migration analysis. What was happening when you were in-house? And then we have a baseline of what was happening when you were in-house and then you moved to cloud. Can we compare the baseline and see if you got better, got worse, or stayed the same? Compliance audit, who logged in? Who did the change? What changed? and capacity optimization. You can see some of the servers are being overloaded with sessions, some are not. So you can use that to spread your sessions. You can see bottlenecks here from a capacity planning standpoint. You can see there is a memory bottleneck that will not allow you to add more than three systems so they can increase, increase your memory. That's all you need to do to get to 20 more systems here. There is Capacity prediction reports available. You can change the amount of users you might have, and then it will map it accordingly. Again, there are a lot of nicer reports for this on the demo. And if you're interested, reach out to us. Configuration changes with performance impact. I think uh, this is one of my favorites and uh, is one of our customers' favorites too. About 
forty percent of the issues or hap issues happen because of a change. Um, whether the change is uh, documented, approved, or not approved, uh, issues happen in a environment that functions well because there was a change. And we have the ability to identify changes in configuration and map that with something that is having an issue. So in this context, you're seeing that somebody was uh, trying to change the database size, but instead of increasing it, they decreased the size. And immediately after that, the database ran out of space. Now, these are two different events. Somebody ran a query in the database to change the size of the database, and then the database ran out of size. And we were able to put those two together. So we are saying, okay, we are seeing this alert, and in the last 24 hours, this particular change happened. Context-based performance alert. And this is hugely, enormously helpful for our customers where they catch, um, they report back saying at least one third of the problems they catch when they see this change next to whatever, wherever, whichever system is causing an issue. A CIFIX performance by geolocations, you just saw that. Uh, this is a, we have different types of reports for that. Uh, let's see, by delivery groups, you can do reports by delivery groups. And there's a GPO performance report. So those are the four tenets that we saw. So once you have this covered, you will be able to deliver your work from anywhere with comprehensive success. Take care of your user experience. Okay, so there's one more poll question. Uh, now that we have come to the end, uh, would you be interested in a deep dive follow-up demo of EG Innovations? And those are your options. Hey, Bella Wire. Well, we see the results. So this was a great demo. Honestly, I learned a lot. So I know many of you, especially the attendees, from the attendees, many of them would be interested to get more deep dive, follow up, and see what they can build for the infrastructure. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, while we still have 20 minutes, what is your suggestion on uh, using your software for a smaller form of like, let's say three to 30 servers or 10 servers or 15 servers, do you recommend? Yes, um, we are customer, uh, uh, customers range from a handful of users, a few dozen users to um, 100,000 users plus. So um, yes, even if you have a small farm, uh, small user group, um, you can definitely look at this. Uh, it is going to help you manage it a little more effectively. Granted that smaller your environment, um, if you have, let's say, just a handful of users, you might have uh, less complex problems. Uh, but if you have uh, 100 plus users, uh, you can definitely use it. Great, okay. Well, thanks for that. Coming back to the pool question, so, over 33 percentage or let's say including the first and second one over 50 percentage of them want to uh, have a deep dive follow up with you later so i'll share the details of who said Excellent. yes and absolutely and we can follow up with them all right we'll be happy to walk you guys through it and so just just a quick overview of what we can do uh, different types of applications, different types of desktops, a comprehensive coverage when it comes to a digital workspace, if you will. Um, you saw all the key capabilities, digital experience monitoring, transaction monitoring, application monitoring, cloud monitoring, capacity planning, root cause analysis, and all of the above. So all these technologies are supported. And in a nutshell, what we deliver is ability to provide user satisfaction from your perspective. Keep your uh, end users happy, get better productivity out of your IT staff and uh, your IT um, environments, higher uptime, simplify management. This is one of our customers' favorite. So since instead of uh, having most of their staff uh, spending time troubleshooting, they are able to now Simplify that, have less resources doing troubleshooting, more resources 
doing futuristic IT projects and then cost control and ROI. Okay, so we have uh, Easy Enterprise Cloud. You guys can uh, go to www.easyinnovations.com and try this out. Uh, you can download and automatically uh, monitor your environment and uh, play with it, or you can reach out to us. Great. And uh, that concludes our uh, presentation for today. So, oh, hey. Q&A. Sorry, go ahead. Other, other no, questions? Yeah, there are a few questions. So. First of all, I want to thank you. This is a very good demo and presentation, Bala. So in contention to that, there's an interesting question. So one of the attendees says that he has been already using other product, but he feels it's a little complicated and complex, in other words, so to configure itself. So how do you compare EG with other products? First question, and do you also provide assistance in implementation and designing, or is that an additional cost? Excellent question. So I will answer this in two parts. Uh, most of the other products that are out there in the market uh, focus on silo, which means uh, you have to look at uh, just Citrix alone and your environment and your ecosystem and your root cause analysis, all of that takes a hit because of that. So you'll only get partial visibility. With EG, you get comprehensive visibility of <clears throat> Citrix, but not only that, the analytics that is added on top of it. As we saw, <clears throat> metric collection is easy, but turning that data into information, into actionable information is where EG shines. And that is something that you will get with EG. And the second part is how difficult it is. So one of the focus areas for us has been to make it as easy as possible for our customers to use it. So all of the thresholds and metrics and all the models you see is all turnkey pre-built. So that means it comes pre-built with industry standard thresholds and automatic thresholds. It also has all the models pre-built. That means you don't have to manually add monitoring. It does it automatically by itself. So it's pretty much turnkey. And we also have implementation services working with you to assist you in case you need assistance. Great. All right, we just have one more minute. If anybody has any other questions, please feel free to ask them. I have two more questions in the line. Uh, does EG help in capacity planning and right sizing for the Citrix infrastructure? What's the next one? Yes, absolutely. We have all these metrics that, uh, um, that we collect in the performance monitoring discipline. And that helps us look at, so uh, I'll give you guys a quick example. Uh, so recently one of our customers uh, enabled 20% uh, enabled increase in their uh, user base by using EG to calculate capacity and see that one of their, one of their application was consuming a lot of resources, and if they were able to isolate that application separately and use desktops without that application and uh, deliver that application in a different way, they were able to get 20% increase with the same capacity that they have. And while we were projecting uh, to use that application within the mix, they, the projections were they had to increase their capacity by 50%, but, but moving that application out they were able to get 20% more on the existing capacity and also service that application separately. So yes, we can help you uh, extensively with capacity planning. Great, there are two more questions. I'm, I'm gonna clap them and ask uh, as both are related. Does, e, does EG provide uh, in-depth product analysis for hybrid setups, let's say, the control plane is on Citrus Cloud, whereas the workload, is, the resource location is on Zen Server Hypervisor. And, and the follow-up question to that is, what other cloud and virtualization platform does EG support? Yep, I think we touched on that a little bit. Uh, yes, we, we definitely support hybrid uh, situations, hybrid platforms where some of the environment is in your uh, uh, data center and some of the 
some of it is in the cloud and different types of cloud. We support all of those uh, different types of scenarios. Our end-to-end -end visibility. So you will be able to see all of that mapped within our topology seamlessly. So you'll be able to see stuff from Citrix Cloud, stuff from AWS Cloud, stuff from your environment, all mapped into the service as how it's being delivered seamlessly within our topology. So yes, it is fully supported. Great. Hey Bala, I just have one last question before we wind off. Uh, the question is about the licensing cost. I am assuming that we can get back to the guest who asked this question with more details. Is that okay with you? Yep. Great. Yep, absolutely. All right. So on that note, we are over the time already. So I want to thank you, Bala, especially for giving us a detailed walkthrough of your product, helping our users and attendees to understand more and how it can benefit them. And thank you all the attendees who stayed all throughout the session and listening to us. So please make please make best use of this solution. This is Citrix Ready approved, as we mentioned in the beginning. We have verified this product on Citrix DAS, that means on Citrix Cloud, various services and on-prem solutions, and also on other Citrix products like, like Hypervisor, Netscaler, and uh, Endpoint Management, ShareFire, Proview, and all of that. So. If you have any questions, you can reach out to EG Innovations at uh, info at eginnovations.com. If you want to reach out to Citrix, Citrix Ready at Citrix.com is the email address. So thank you everybody for staying on and listening to us. We'll connect you again in our next webinar. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.